So this totality, what does it look like? You know, if you really deeply want to find out, well, is there really such a thing as enlightenment? I mean, it sounds nice. It seems like these other people have come across seem pretty convinced that there is such a thing as it. Is it really real? <coughs> So those are the types of people that are ready for this. If you're at that place where you really just want to find out. And if you want to find out, there's only one way, really, and that's to be total in everything you do. And that means no awareness gets sleeps, uh, slips through the cracks. Total focus on everything you're doing all the time. So it's a giving up of yourself ultimately to consciousness itself. Because you know whether you're uh, tying your shoelace or making your bed, you know, you're not you're not tying the shoelace and and focusing on, you know, needing to lock the front door before you leave the house or you know a conversation you had you know a couple days ago at work none of that enters your awareness anymore all that's happening is a shoelace being tied that's it you know <clears throat> that's it that becomes your life all the time wherever you are that's that's your work that's what you're up to is just totally being there for it you know not philosophizing anymore let it in you can't be spiritual either right there's no there's nothing fancy about being totally present when you're taking a shit is there there's nothing fancy about that. Nothing profoundly spiritual. But, you know, if you can't be 100% total in taking a shit, then just as much as you can be when you're sitting with a teacher in satsang, then you're, you're kidding yourself, you know? <clears throat> it's not enough to just say you want the truth. You have to allow the truth to devour you, you know, to really find out, well, what is this truth thing? And why is it always connected to this thing called enlightenment? So obviously, you know, this has to do with uh, letting go of your purpose. If you don't have a purpose anymore, then you can be there fully when you're tying your shoelace, you know? It's not being uh, particularly interesting to your mind anymore. You really do become boring to your mind. But let the mind be bored, you know? It's not you anyway. It's not the truth anyway. really difficult to uh, really point directly 
at what I'm trying to point at, because this whole setup is about beginnings and endings, right? And how easy beginnings and endings are to uh, change your focus from just this passive witnessing presence. You know, I say be total, you're tying your shoelace, you know, you stand up, you're walking over to the computer, you sit down, you log into Facebook, you know, you click on the live stream, and there's Kyle talking, you know, Kyle blabbers for a little bit about truth, and then it's over. The live stream's over. You get off your chair, you go to the bathroom. <clears throat> you know, that's what I mean by totality, not placing special specialness to beginnings and endings. You know, so it just becomes one big flow, one big soup. Yeah, Victoria says there's no person that can get enlightened. Right. But there is enlightenment. So yeah, it sounds like the ultimate contradiction. <clears throat> yeah, the little me that wants to find, that wants to seek, that will never wake up. It can't. Because it doesn't really exist in the first place. It is the veil, whatever that is, it's the veil that blinds enlightenment. So maybe it's more accurate to say there is such a thing as enlightenment, but there is not necessarily such a thing as an enlightened person. Words. Tricky. <laughs> and, you know, that's what totality does is it gradually reveals that there's no person. That this whole idea of a person is just that, you know, an idea. If all focus is given up moment to moment to consciousness, to awareness itself, then moment to moment, every moment, it's realized that there's actually nobody there doing anything. It's just whatever it is, is just happening by itself. Now, the current state of humanity is that there is such a thing as a person becoming enlightened. And most of humanity doesn't call it that. It calls it getting a great job. It calls it getting, finding the right partner. You know? It calls it uh, eating a chocolate fudge sundae. You know, those are all other words describing enlightenment that you're going to be added to somehow, completed somehow. Yeah, very hard to describe. Hard to point to, fun to try. That's why I, I do it. Fun to share. That's why we all do it. So, you know, whenever I talk and, or write something or make a video and, you know, you might resonate maybe with something in there, it's not so much the knowledge that kind of gets understood by your mind that's resonating as much as it is the freedom that's already there inside of you that is triggered and 
wants to come more to the forefront. That's all. It's not that I've told you these profound sayings or scripts or passages or whatever. It's that that innocence in you has been triggered. You know? So yeah, I would say it's possible to have innocence all of the time. But you have to be total. You have to take this rejector of innocence and tell it to be total. So that there's no excuse anymore but to be innocent all of the time. <clears throat> little kids. I have little kids at home. And uh, they're just automatically total in everything they're doing. Because their mind hasn't really... <clears throat> yeah their mind hasn't really developed too much just yet. Uh, I had my daughter on my shoulders a little while ago. We were at the park and uh, uh, and I was just walking and, you know she was talking to me about something that was important to her. Um, I don't remember what it was, uh, <clears throat> but I was still paying attention to her to let her know that I was enjoying her talking to me. But you know, whatever she was talking about, you know, I, it was really hitting me that you know she doesn't live outside of uh, the minute. You know, her whole existence exists within one minute. You know. You know, I'm sure, as I've noticed in my other older son, you know, as they get older, you know, it expands to an hour. Their whole life exists within the hour. They don't really think too much outside of the hour. You know, as you get older, you know, maybe it's a couple hours, and it's a whole day, and it's a few days, and it's a year, a year, a couple of years, you know? Until you have this massive life now that you have to think about. So when your life is just within that minute, you know, you can even dial it back even more than that. You're total. You're totally there to life. Uh, ignoring life. That's why I say totality is the end of ignorance. Yeah, so Diane says, it's difficult, little me is a tyrant. Totality is an enemy of the little me. Well, uh, I'll, I'll just say, you know, truth, and it might sound fluffy, but truth doesn't have any enemies, you know? So, and, and definitely me as a tyrant, you could say, uh, and also very cunning, uh, because it can so easily step in front of truth and claim to be truth, you know? by uh, separating itself and saying, I'm truth, and there's the tyrant, you know.
that you know this is all really about rendering the little me completely um, non-special. You know. Not only um, you know is it not going going to be able to uh, succeed, but it's not even going to be able to fail either. It's going to be so non-important, so unspecial, that it doesn't get either options. You know? It can't identify with succeeding or failing. It just doesn't get to exist anymore. You know, that's being total. Right? So I know that you know a lot of you have had really difficult upbringings, childhoods, and a lot of trauma and pain, painful experiences. You know, uh, so it can seem like you have really good cause to uh, you know to uh, struggle, and you know your wish is granted. You get to struggle if you still want to hang on to that. <coughs> But you're not going to find freedom through it, you know? So you don't get to be a victim anymore if you want to wake up, really. You don't get to be. How does that feel, you know? Yeah, what a relief that, uh, you know, that's the funniest thing about this enlightenment thing is that. Anybody who's actually moved into that, transitioned into enlightenment, you know, almost is like, has this feeling of, gee, these, these poor souls, you know, that they've been seeking their whole lives, and, uh, and I'm trying to say stop, because the gold is what, what's already here, and yet the only way I can do that is by giving it this name, this fancy name called enlightenment. Which can't help as far as letting go of specialness goes, but whatever. I can't really think of too many other words that self-realization is a good one. Lynn says, if I'm not special, I'm not good enough. I would say if you're not special, you're not anything. Being not good enough is still being special. Because you get to be still. You get to be somebody who's not good enough. There's a specialness in there, you know? Does that make sense? I've talked about what happened with me a long time ago. how there was that experience of failing and then giving up, right? Um, good. Um, but it wasn't, that final giving up was not actually a moment of failure. It was just recognizing I couldn't even do that. I couldn't even be someone who was failing anymore. wasn't even able to be special anymore as being someone that was not good enough. Right. 
So totality reveals that truth has nothing to do with being good enough at all. You know? <laughs> And it's rampant, you know, it's quite the eye opener. I remember when I read that somewhere, when someone talked about how humanity is caught under the spell of needing to, you know, be praised. And it's everywhere you turn, everything. There's always this eagerness to be seen, to need to be seen. You really pick apart like pretty much every conversation you could ever have with anybody there's always some whether you're talking about a hurricane that's happened you know and the victims or anything you always find that your your modus operandi in the conversation is to somehow revel in the specialness of whatever's going on you know to feel more like you're somebody and that they're somebody by dwelling on it. You know? <laughs> Seems kind of twisted because you're talking about unfortunate circumstances like that, but yeah. That's why everybody loves going to the news and CNN, you know? Ooh, you know, you get to revel in the specialness of tragedy. Pretty twisted. Yeah, so totality doesn't give you the uh, opportunity anymore for uh, using yes, buts. You know? <laughs> You're in Florida, Victoria? Yes, but this, this, and this, you know. No, there's no more uh, leeway anymore if you want to be total. If you really want to find out this thing called, find out about this thing called enlightenment. thoughts. So. Yeah, no fear. You know, and that's the beautiful thing. When you really put things into perspective, you know, you're going to die. You're going to die. And I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not offering a prediction, Victoria, but uh, we're all going to die, you know, sooner or later. As to when, you know, so why waste any of your life being afraid, even if there's a hurricane coming, you know, just take everything as it comes, do what's needed now, but do it totally, you know, no need to sensationalize anything. Good. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, we think that by sensationalizing that uh, we're creating specialness. But, you know, all you're doing is dumping chocolate on a strawberry. You know, it's not needed. It really isn't. You don't get to have a story when you're total. But even your mind can kind of poke and prod a bit and sense that, you know, at least understand intellectually a little bit. Um, that by not having a story anymore, you know, and being total moment to moment, being there completely, uh, not not being able to be special anymore, then there's there's still something there. What is that? What would be there? You know, and you can kind of sense with just awareness, it's mysterious, alert consciousness. And because there's no story, there's no ability to think. Everything lights up. It would have to, wouldn't it? You know? All that's left is that is for everything to be light, made of awareness. Yeah, it's all perfect, right? Two great comments. Diane says, neediness is the driver of the little me. Needs to be seen, heard, understood, loved, appreciated, validated. Little me just needs. <clears throat> to be special even as a victim. The story. Victoria says, that's also perfect. Yeah, it's so easy when we're noticing the the tendencies of the mind to be like, oh, I can't believe that, you know, little bugger, you know, and yet still there's room there to, you know, wrap your arms around the little, the little person that's saying, oh, you know. <laughs> <coughs> Because that's it right there, isn't it? You know, that little that little one that goes oh. is the same one that you know turns on CNN and sees the hurricane stories and it's, oh. you know. <laughs> it's a subtle attachment still to being a victim. Very subtle.
so you know you can start to sense that this really is like two parallel worlds almost you know and kind of oscillating between the two as you're waking up more and more you know. one you can kind of sense well there's no bloody problem at all in life is there and then there's the transition to the other side usually starts off slow with a subtle resistance to something and then it just gets away with itself so yeah truth is about recognizing truth which is there's no problems there can't be if it's truth and then also recognizing that you still really think there is problems and going back and forth back and forth back and forth that's a part of being total too is recognizing that process of back and forth being okay with it but really what's happening is just you know, you're, like I described before you're kind of dipping your toe into the bathtub you're adjusting to the temperature that everything is okay that uh, there's actually no problem if, if it's going to be true and then pulling your toe out back into the cold So if you really are kind of locked, locking in, zeroing in on this totality thing, um, you know, you've now got both feet in the tub, and they're not coming out anymore. You know, so now you're just sitting on the edge of the tub. Your feet are in. You know, so now you're going to do what it takes to get the rest of you in there. What does it take? Recognizing that it's much more peaceful to be in the water than to be out in the cold. And usually you have to just keep experiencing the differences in temperature to eventually just go, you know what? This is ridiculous. I'm not going to fight it anymore. it's starting to really become obvious the difference between the two that's a blessing the true blessing if there ever ever was one it's when the two of them are a little bit both blurry you know they both seem to kind of offer equal value but when the contrast starts to really become apparent between the two of them, that's a blessing you can jump for joy you know, that started to happen.
。出たわ So maybe there's a thought, well, I don't know if I'm really cut out for this totality thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not quite ready for it yet. It's okay. You know, part of my job is to try to seduce you into being more ready. Because you're going there anyway. If you say you're not ready yet to be total and everything. Uh, it's fine, you're going to be total and ignoring totality until you are. All I can really say is what you're seeking is what totality can help indirectly bring about. You have a better idea in your head about what freedom is. You know? Well, it's because totality hasn't quite set in just yet. Freedom has to be 100% experienced by you in order for it to be legit. If even a part of that is reserved for thinking, for uh, it being a partial belief, then it's not really freedom. Not, not completely. It has to be 100% your whole experience of life. saying this is it has anything to do with attainment but you know if you're talking about you know say you want to be a, a doctor or a policeman or something you know you're, you're, you can't be half a policeman you can't be half a doctor you know you have to uh, transition through all the learning stages so to speak quote unquote learning don't really mean that but you know what I mean You're either a doctor or you're not. You're either a policeman or you're not. You're either awake or you're not. And, you know, you can sense. If you're a doctor in training, yeah, I, I kind of know a little bit more about what it means to be a doctor. And maybe I'm not a doctor quite yet because I still think there's some more things to see. But I know that I, I'm on to something here about becoming a doctor, you know, or a policeman. And you know when it's official that you're a doctor. You just do. There's something that clicks. And obviously, someone tells you you are too, but whatever. Uh, that doesn't matter. You kind of know, right? It has to be an experiential thing. 100% known in your own experience. None of it has to come from a belief. None of it can come from a belief. Thank God, because if it did, then it's a booby prize, isn't it? So totality makes it 100% your experience. 